everybody. This is Stuart Jean coming back at you here. Musicians Institute, Hollywood, California. You know it. Drum Magazine. We're coming off a of NAM. Uh, what an exciting time. Uh, here we are, January 2020. We are looking at working man's Latin grooves. You know, I respect this music so much. Uh, I don't have an upbringing with this music. Uh, I'm presenting this uh, these tutorials as a way to help you get through a gig and just open up, just pop the seal on uh, the giant world, wonderful, colorful world of Latin music. Um, <clears throat> so uh, today we're going to tackle the songo. Uh, you're probably familiar with it. It's a uh, very drummer-friendly type groove. It's a linear groove. It's a, you know, if you just heard someone playing it, you wouldn't really necessarily think of it as a Latin groove. It's like a funk groove, but it's like a funkified mambo. Uh, it's a great, uh, you know, if you struggle with trying to cop all the parts, you know, when we're, when we're playing a, a mambo or a samba, we're basically trying to emulate three or four people on the drum set. I mean, that's pretty hard to do. Um, and we can get by pretty good. Uh, the songo is more just like a, a, a cool drum groove. You don't have to worry about, like, I'm not really covering all the parts of a section. Uh, I'm just, you know, hi-hats like the cowbell. Snare drum is timbales maybe and the bass drum is the bass you know um so yeah the songo we basically have a two bar pattern uh, let's keep it simple there's a lot of variations i have some personal feelings about how i play my version i don't play it that much but it has come through for me and every now and then it gets called and i get a little nod of approval from uh you know the guys i'm playing with i don't sound so much like a gringo uh but anyway um, so this variation, gonna keep it simple. We're playing this on a hi hat. One, two, one, two. I like to feel Latin in two. Mm, 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 mm. Bass drum, three and four and uh, uh, uh. Syncopated. All right, that's your bass. And then we get into the snare drum. Here's where the, the linear bit kind of comes in. Uh, you know, this groove matches the mm, bop, 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 the two, three clave uh, pretty, pretty nicely. Uh, fits right in there. You're playing that rhythm uh, while you're playing this groove, uh, whether it's on the hi-hat in some places. The second bar, the bass drum lines right up with uh, the second half of, of the two, three clave, the last two notes there. Uh, and the snare drum catches some of it as well. Uh, so, uh, without the accents, uh, let's just go through the mechanics. We have this. All right, that's it. It's kind of flat. doesn't sound so great like that. So then we pop in a couple accents. Some people play it with an extra uh, accent. I'll play it. Uh, they play this one. Okay. Personally, I don't like to play that because it takes away from the 2 3 feel to me and it just gets too redundant. Uh, I like to have the. And then the second bar to give me a little freedom. I'll play that note and there's nothing wrong with it at all. I just feel like. I think it's been morphed over the years. Maybe, you know, this was invented in the 70s. Uh, I discovered it in the 80s. Um, and I feel like over time it's morphed into, you know, it's moving farther and farther away from a Latin beat and more of a funk on top kind of busy rock funk groove. And I think we got to make sure that we practice it slow and sit on it, you know, uh, and not play it too, too spastically. Uh, so anyway. Uh, but yeah, that's the groove, right? Here we go. Okay. Um, some variations. We could add a, a couple little diddles on the uh, on the on the left hand uh, into uh, here, like this.
again, not every bar. Probably sprinkled in, peppered in here and there uh, if you're feeling it. Um, and then we could add a little variety on the hi-hat. Uh, I don't really go full like... I just don't do that. I like to play... Uh, Just not as restricting to me. I, I like it. It feels good. I could open a hi hat. Cool. Uh, of course, we can move it up to the bell. You could play it on a cowbell. You could play it. Uh, I've seen guys play it like on a splash cymbal, uh, side of the drum. We could play it uh, on a jam block, on the rim of a drum, but on the bell's nice. with the double notes there. And yeah, that's your songo, uh, at least a beginning of a songo. Um, of course, if you were playing a song that required that groove, you could always start here. And then build it in, start to sneak in that snare drum and, and eventually be playing the full on deal. So uh, just scratching the surface, everybody, uh, it's, you know, do that deep dive. You have the, uh, you know, the luxury of the Internet at your fingertips. I always say to my students, everything you need is really like literally a tap of a piece of glass or a slide of a finger on a piece of glass nowadays. It's like, come on, it's so easy, you know? Um, so yeah, YouTube, Spotify, whatever you gotta do, find it out there. Just look, Google Songo, Los Van Van, and listen to a song, and especially YouTube, because then you could go to, you know, suggested videos, and next thing you know, you're gonna go, how did I wind up here, and how did I not know this music existed, and wow. You know, and you're just going to open up avenues for your playing. You don't have to become a great Latin drummer, but it's going to help your musicality, whether you're a punk drummer, R&B drummer, whatever it is, it's, it's all a mixed bag these days. And the more you listen to, the more it's going to add to, uh, you know, your, your growth and your toolbox. And that's what it's all about. So, uh, yeah, thanks again for checking these out. And we got, obviously, uh, more coming in the month of February and onward. So... Thanks, everyone, for the comments, the support, and just keep supporting Drum Magazine and the, the drumming community. Take care. Thanks. <laughs>